Good morning guys get my coffee going here and I got a little bit of a secret to share with you today all right first things first here it's cold here we gotta go get some heat going and out into the shop here all right guys I'm gonna get started here now uh, need to get this working here but I'll try to kind of explain to you some things here as I go this is what I've got set up just a cheap little Nikon camera Canon camera sitting here nothing special um, it's just what I've got you know it's what I'm gonna start with here see where we go from here but anyway what I'm doing today rebuilding this little starter Briggs and Stratton 17 half horse so I'm gonna tear this starter apart I assume what I'm gonna find um, is probably going to be corrosion uh, and stuff inside the motor that just needs to be sanded down and cleaned up if you've never done this there's really not a whole lot to these things uh, brushes uh, run on the motor uh, bearings can go bad sometimes they'll freeze up uh, most people who've any worked on any of these at any time at all have seen the starter gears get stripped out but anyway I'm gonna get started here uh, I do have another camera a little Nikon camera running here in the background Hopefully that's picking up my voice okay because I'm going to turn my phone off so I can get both hands going here. Okay. Alright, guys. Pretty much all I've got here is a little quarter inch socket set, 5 16 Break this loose. Just two bolts here, pull these apart, and I'll show you a little trick here to keep your brushes from popping out. Got a uh, half inch drive socket, 13 sixteenths, and I'll show you why I need that here in just a minute. It comes in very handy. Deep well, shallow well, doesn't matter, you can use either one. Okay, once you get the bolts out, pull that off. Kind of see there, already see corrosion and crud stuck down in there. Now, this is where this comes in handy. You pop this out of here, and if you do, it's not going to hurt a whole lot. Uh, you can put it back together. But this keeps your brushes and your springs and everything from flying all over the place. Slide that right down in top of there. And that way, when you slide this plate up, all your brushes will get stuck on the socket. Just a little trick there I've learned over the years. Um, makes it much easier to put this back together. After that, it's magnetic, so there is some resistance there. But you can see that starter. It's been wet, it's been sitting outside. Uh, seemed under days. What we're going to do here, you can see here how black that is. That should be shiny copper. That is where the contact is made inside the starter. When this gets black and dirty like that, uh, bearing looks okay. This spins free, so I don't have a bearing issue. It really is just a dirt corrosion and crud issue. All I do, clean this thing up. Uh, my air compressor is on here. So pulling this off a little bit, just get anything out of there if you can. Like I said, that does spin free. It is normal to have a little bit of play here. Bearings in the housing are not tight, even when they're brand new. If you tear one of these apart, you will get some play in that. But all I'm going to do, take a piece of sandpaper here. I think this is 320, 400, something like that. And I'm going to polish that up. Get that all the way around. Tell you what I should have done is hook this up to a battery here and showing you how 
slow and sluggish it was. I really don't have a good way to put it on a load here on the bench. It probably would run free. But just to show you the bearings weren't locked up. Um, if you get one that has bearings locked up, it's usually just rusted and frozen in here. It's not really a bearing, it's more of a bushing. A lot of times you can take it apart, you can sand that down, polish it down, steel wool, sandpaper, pretty much anything that can kind of get all that crud and corrosion off of there will take care of this. But this is really a simple job. Uh, it's really not something that you need to go out and buy a brand new starter for most of the time. Uh, these do go bad to where you cannot do this and get them running, but there are a lot of times you can. Uh, if you're doing this as a hobby on the side or to make money, you want to try to save as much money as you can. Anyway, clean that up. It's rusty. You really, I'll use sandpaper on it, but you really don't need to sand the magnets down. I'll just kind of rough that up and I'll take a rag and wipe it out. I get that done, we'll blow it out again. Old socks. Perfect for rags in the garage. I do have two girls too that I've tried to keep them involved in some of this, show them. I mean, these are life skills. If you can learn a little stuff like this and you aren't afraid to get your hands dirty, you can pretty much fix anything around the house. This isn't a hard job, it's something that anybody with enough skills to change a flat tire can do. Okay, I got that cleaned up a little bit. Probably could polish on that a little bit more. I think I will. I don't want to take any more off than you have to. Um, this does make good contact the more wear you put on it, the more you shorten the line. And I've got a pretty aggressive sandpaper here too. I mean, like I said, that's 320 and I'm sanding copper here. It doesn't take much to sand that. very small amount of oil and I squirt it right down in here right down in there and when I say a small amount it does not take much at all so it's more than I really want to and I put a little bit on here uh, when you engage the starter it slings that out the flywheel And that just kind of lubes everything up there before you put it back together. So I will also, just to make her look pretty here, polish up this surface that matches with that bushing inside the housing. And that just ensures everything is clean. Drop a little bit of oil down in there. Same thing down in here. You just kind of clean that out. Sometimes there'll be really dry, corroded grease from the factory that's not doing much anymore. Put another drop of oil or two in there. That's 
That's spinning free. We don't have a bearing issue, guys. This starter should fly like crazy when we hook her back up. Now, the other thing I like to do, where the brushes are at in here, you've got four brushes with the wire connected to your starter wire. If this is corroded, chances are these are a little bit too. You can kind of slide your socket down a little bit. Spin that away and look at the surfaces here. This is a surface that would ride on that part there. Make sure none of those are cracked. Make sure all these wires are connected. You will find these where somebody's cranked on them so much that it's burned. And I just popped it apart. So we'll show you how to put that back together. Um, where somebody has cranked this so much that they've actually burnt these wires in two or melted this plastic piece that goes inside of it. Um, this really isn't that big a deal to get this back together and luckily everything stayed right here. It didn't go flying off. The brushes look good. Plenty of life left in them. I'm just going to push them right back in there. You only need about 14 fingers to get this done. And that's where the socket comes in handy. Um, I've used pop rivets, toothpicks. Um, you can put them in from the back side there and it'll hold all this together. We'll see if I can do it. Just everything lined up here and put my socket back in there if I can. I apologize, my camera skills are not very good here. I'll learn as I go though. Alright, we're going to get some pop rivets here. I need more hands. Like I said, pop rivets, nails, toothpicks, pretty much whatever you've got. Turn this over backwards. From the back side, just push that past that point, and you can kind of slide that down in there. And all you're doing is sticking that in there so that it holds that in place while you get the rest of them in. My fat fingers are hard to get down in there and hold everything and push everything together. So this just kind of helps me with that. Anyway, like I was saying at the beginning of this video, my background is not as a professional mechanic, so I'm sure there's plenty of professionals out there that'll enjoy laughing at these videos, but that's all right. I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this for me. And it's something that I tinker around with in the job. You know, if it takes me two hours to rebuild a, a starter that takes most people 20 minutes, that's all right. I'm staying out of trouble. The wife knows where I'm at. Um, never been into video games. Really don't watch a lot of TV. You probably hear it on in the background there, but it's kind of noise to... When I take a break or something, I'll sit down and kind of watch through it. If I hear something interesting, I'll stop and watch it. Um, for the most part, this is what I do. The spring just fell out. Luckily, it fell right there. Normally I spend the next two hours looking for springs. Probably an easier way to do this. Some of you professionals want to tell me the easier way to do it. That'd be awesome. So I've done this a few times. We always get them back together, but might not be pretty. So anyway. That's all I've done. Just pop rivets holding the brushes in. Lay that down. I'll blow this out a little bit. Pretty much. That's all there is to it. Now on this housing, there is one of these four notches that's a little deeper. That's where your starter connection wire goes in. Uh, it's helpful 
make sure that goes back on in the same spot. So when you put it back on the mower, your starter wire doesn't wind up against the block or someplace where it's just not going to fit in. Um, call it the castle, but the notches go towards the opposite end of the starter gear. And now I'm going to try to do this without losing these brushes out of here again. And I think I'm going to slide my socket back in there. Everything kind of put together here the way it needs to go. Slide this down in there. And then I can pull those pop rivets out. So again, we're back where we started. Now at this point, set my socket down on there. Now you will have to take something and push those back. And get a little screw back for that. Sometimes you can wobble this around and kind of get in there, but if you just put pressure, you know, not excessive, but hold it down, you can pull that socket out, and these don't actually go anywhere because you're pushing them against the inside part of the starter, and then just take your screwdriver, and one at a time, take enough pressure off of them so you can get them in there. Um, if you've ever done any lock picking, this is kind of like picking a lock. Not that I know anything about that. But anyway, get all that together there. Make sure you're flush. Everything's spinning as it should. It wasn't up against my vise. Okay, everything's lined up where it started. Clean that off a little bit. You can also look at, you know, if you get, when you work on enough stuff, there's marks on everything where it comes apart. If you're not sure how something goes together or came apart, look at the indents on the mating surfaces. So I know that came apart just like that. Bolt holes line up, lines up with the starter wire. And just kind of wiggle it around until you get the bolts to fall in the bottom. Snug these down, spin your starter, nothing's binding up. You don't want to tighten this down and have one of those brushes crushed underneath it or something. Tighten those down. I don't know the torque specifications on these, but I call it one finger tight, snug, not tight. You'll easily spin these out if you're over tight there. Let me grab a battery. We'll see if we can't spin this thing. Alright, just a little $20 Walmart battery. All you gotta do here is put your ground cable 
on your mounting plate. Make sure you wiggle it, get good contact there. A little corrosion on it. I don't see a little sparks here, but you should see this thing run. Turn this around here where you can see what I'm doing here. Alright, all I'm going to do then, once I got the ground on, touch this to the post where your battery terminal goes. Sounds good. No whining, no squealing, the starter. Oh uh, yeah, don't do that. That's not good at all. But anyway, I'm trying to show you here, as you spin this, that starter gear flies up. Your flywheel will be up here. So when this engages, it comes up to hit the flywheel, everything runs, it goes back down. So make sure that's working. We got some torque now. But she sounds good. And that's really all there is to rebuild one of these things. Unless it's got something more serious going on. That's pretty much it. We'll throw it back on and see what happens here. All right, guys, a couple things here um, before I get started here. First off, if you've stuck around this far, thank you very much. This is all new to me, um, at least the video portion of it is anyway. Um, been a learning curve trying to keep track of what I'm doing here and making sure I'm uh, keeping you guys informed too. So, again, sincerely thank you. Secondly, um, since I put the starter back together, took a little break, ate some lunch, um, watched the video to kind of see where I'm at here. And one thing I realized, there was a lot of noise in the background, so apologize for that. Um, I've since turned the TV off, turned my uh, little heater off, uh, at least while I'm doing video. Uh, should be a lot, lot quieter, should notice that now. Um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing back together here. Uh, it shouldn't take me a couple minutes here, five minutes or so to put this thing on try it out. Um, I do not have a gas tank on this so I'll squirt a little starting fluid in it and try to start it. Uh, it has fired once before. Um, another thing I'll do is bring you up to speed with where I'm at on this mower. Uh, this mower was purchased uh, hell, probably a week ago at this point. Um, I have uh, cleaned it. had a huge mat rat nest, rodent nest on it. Um, gotten all that cleaned out. Checked the valves on it. Um, I originally thought it had uh, a seized motor. In fact, I was told the motor was locked up on it when I went to look at it, but I could turn it over by hand, um, so I knew it wasn't that. It was actually the starter was not allowing it to crank even with a good battery in it. Um, rebuilt the carb on it. Uh, the cable that engages the deck was broken. I replaced that um, starter now. This will be the first time I've really had a chance to hopefully get a starter on here and get it fired. I have got it to, to spit and sputter a little bit, but it hasn't actually ran. So hopefully this will be its final straw here. We'll get her going. Um, starter's ready to go. I think you saw it bench tested. But we'll get her on here and see what she does. If you've ever put one of these together and the bolt on the bottom is loose, make sure you get a wrench um, on this bottom nut because you will twist the wire off inside the star that we just put back together uh, if you don't. In other words, that nut right there on the inside gets loose. I've actually got a wrench that I filed down to fit that. I don't think we really need it. Heard my little heater kick on there again. Hopefully that's not too loud. It is pretty cold today. One of these bolts does have a little clip that holds it 
hold your wires up out of the way. Make sure you get that on there and don't tighten it down on the wires. with a sore thumb, but we'll get her done. Alright, that is a Torx head bolt, but I just got to pull the screwdriver lay in here to get that most of the way in a little quicker. Make sure you don't tighten your wires down underneath the mounting bracket. One thing I don't know how I'm going to do yet is edit this video. Uh, looking for options for doing that. So currently I'm trying to get this done so I don't have to do a whole lot of editing. But things like this where I'm just putting bolts in, I would love to edit this out. So if anybody has any ideas, um, cheaper better. I'd love to hear about it. Um, if you made it this far too, go ahead and subscribe. I'd love to see where this goes. Have as many people follow me as you uh, as I can get. And I'll try to be entertained. At least try to learn something. All right, wires are good. I know I could take that dip stick out and get it out of the way, but I don't want to drop something down in that hole. Again, these are. Bolts being tightened down into aluminum, you definitely want them a little above snug, but you don't want them so tight that you're going to strip them out. I'll call these two and a half finger bolts, it's my official term. All right, I got my wires hooked up. One thing I just realized I did not do was unhook the battery. Um, I would strongly suggest doing that before you work on anything like this. Not that there's anybody else out here with me, but you can't easily short that battery cable out. Alright, well, nothing in the uh, way. Feet out from underneath the blades. One quick tap here, see what we got. Alright. Alright, like I said, I do not have any gas in this thing. I will grab a can of starting fluid here though. Quick shot in here and see if we can't smoke up the garage a little bit. And we don't have a muffler either, it's pretty loud. But anyway, there you go. Uh, we got the starter gear back on, so I'll wrap this video up right here. Again, thank you guys very much. Uh, appreciate you watching. Um, go ahead, like, and subscribe, and I'll post a few more videos on this project and see where we go with it. Thanks, guys.